Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. It is Friday, December 1st, 2023. I'm your host, George Kurt, joined by the one and only Cody Roadcap. Cody, it's December, so it's it's holiday season. You feeling jolly today? It was cold the last two days, that's for sure. So I'm definitely right. <laughs> I was like, man, where did that come from? Uh, it, that's at least in central PA, but I'm sure it was uh, cold for everybody across the country the last couple of days. But yeah, holiday season's right around the corner. Uh, we just came off Thanksgiving, so obviously feeling festive. Uh, some great games this last week. Looking forward to the, some more great games this week. Yes, sir. So as you, uh, if you guys don't remember, uh, we were a little bit off on the schedule last week with Thanksgiving, but new episodes every Friday during the season. And Cody does a bonus World Cup episode every week. So make sure you check that out. Give us a follow on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you guys watch or listen. And you can follow us on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at the Couch GMs for even more content than you get from just the show here. And as always, feel free to send us a DM with any fantasy questions that you have each week. We get to as many as we can, as quickly as we can, to try to help you guys win your leagues. All right, Cody, a little bit of news to hit. Why don't we sit back, relax, and chat? First, a little bit of accountability. Cody, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, George just mentioned that I do a bonus (laughs) episode each week. Well... I guess it has to change to most weeks now. Uh, I apologize for not getting that out earlier this week. Uh, as everyone realizes, life gets hectic sometimes. It didn't happen. Uh, but I want to give you a quick little update on the Couch Games World Cup. And if you're like, bro, what are you talking about? What's the Couch Games World Cup? That is our four-year, 30-person fantasy football experience trying to figure out who is the best of the best. And we have three leagues running simultaneously, Group A, Group B, Group C. Uh, and there's only two weeks left. Uh, and this goes not just for the Couch Jams World Cup for everybody. Uh, make sure you're still setting your lineups. Make sure you're still playing it out through, especially in the Couch Jams World Cup, because that win percentage across all three years will help decide the final roster for the championship team in year four. Um, and just going to give a couple shout outs. Uh, I know we have some buys starting to lock up already uh, and give you a little bit of a preview. But uh, the first one, I'll start in my group. I'm going to start a little bit out of order here, and that is Group B. A uh, shout out to Bree, which is George's fiance, and Shelby, which is Tyler's wife. At spots one and two, Bree locking in a bye with her impressive record. I think she has the best record of everybody uh, in she the Cowboys World Cup as of now. Ten and two currently. Uh, but we were only able to, not by choice, but only be get two females involved in the Cowboys World Cup in the first iteration of it. And they're si- they both ended up the same league, and they're both sitting at the top. So want to give a shout out to them uh george correct me if i'm wrong but in group c which is your group mm-hmm. brandon uh you've heard us talk about it, us uh his name is my team because the dude does not pick team names uh but i believe you said he locked up a buy in your group yes, he this did. week uh and then in group a i can't remember his actual name but ashley madison, ashley madison is greg greg i can never <laughs> remember his name continues to put up points on points on points i believe i remember off the top of my head has like a 200 point lead in total points uh, it's something like that i know it's a 200 point lead at least over me i'm not sure if group b has any higher scores but i'm the top scorer in group c and he's got at least 200 points on me yeah he he's been balling out um and looking real good for for the playoffs um, so just want to shout out a couple of those Actually, one more for you missed in Group A as well. Kempe and Greg, both of them actually are at nine and three and both clinched a bye already, being two games over the rest of the pack. So don't want to leave out Kempe here, our resident betting expert, also our resident bye week in the World Cup expert, apparently. Well, the, you said two games. I didn't I didn't have time to break down all the tiebreakers, so I wasn't sure if yeah. they both lost out or if they're... They're the, the it goes to points. Lock. I know they're both high in points scored, right. so there's probably a good chance they get locks. But uh, no, nah, they're both true. two it, games over with two left, so they're really controlling their own destiny. I think it's a good, pretty good chance they got they got that locked up. Yeah, and I know in Group B, uh, I believe so. Three through eight are within two games of each other, so there's a lot of uh, shifting around that could happen. I know, and I play some of the top guys, and I'm sitting at number three and worried about not making the playoffs. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, this is just a shameless plug. Check out the bonus episode. Check out our content on Facebook, Instagram, and all those with the weekly updates and standings and uh, 
It is the Calcius World Cup, and I want to give an update since I completely dropped the ball on a podcast episode earlier this week. But mostly because I didn't want to talk about this news segment by myself. <laughs> Should we talk about Mr. 79 Days? Uh, yes. This is absolutely insane to me. For the record, what we're talking about, if you live under a rock, Aaron Rodgers, uh, who tore his Achilles after four plays in week one. Super substantial it, injury. It is now week 13, and he is back practicing. He's been His 21-day window is activated. Now, he has not been cleared for all football activities, so we'll see what happens at the end of this 21 days if he's actually activated, if he comes back. I know there's some speculation. Well, he's only going to come back if the Jets can get a playoff win. The Jets have the Falcons this week. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So maybe this is a jolt like, look, guys, I'm here. Just take care of business the next two weeks, and I'm back, and we'll take this into the – then there's also rumors out there that he's doing this not – he'll come back either way if he can to save head coach Robert Sala's job, the GM's job, Nathaniel Hackett's job, because if he can put out you know a good week 18 or a good week 17 be like, look, this is what the Jets are supposed to be. I got hurt. Let's roll with this team one more year. Could be it. Um and then my favorite one is apparently he was talking to media today in the Jets, and he's like, what happens if I tear it again? What happens if it re it? I'll have five or six months to get it better. What's the worst thing that can happen? And I'm like, you know what? That there's, what's the worst that could happen? I guess, yeah, I mean, you're going to go into the offseason and be able to recover it. But 79 days, maybe 77 days, I can't remember the exact number, is still super impressive. We're just like two years away from talking about Cam Akers tearing it in July and making it back for the playoffs. And that's a, you know, additional three, four months. And we're like that he had on top of what Rogers is doing. Well, yeah. And if you're talking about what is the worst that could happen? Yeah. I guess the worst case is he does re injure it. He gets another surgery and he has the same or a slightly better timeline than what cam Akers did and like you said he beat the cam Akers timeline by like three months so if you're saying he can come back in three to four months if you give him six i don't see a reason why he couldn't make another comeback maybe that wouldn't be super visible if he comes back early tears it again and you're like well you shouldn't have done that but knowing rogers he will and he's not someone who thinks about the negatives either um and i think this is gonna if he comes back even if they're out of the playoff race a lot of it's gonna be building morale for next season not not only saving coaches or gms jobs or whatever it might be but trying to show this team we can click on all cylinders with me here this is the team that can compete next season which is obviously where jets fans minds went to once rogers had the injury obviously if they can sneak into a playoff spot that's their ideal situation don't know if that's gonna happen with their poor quarterback play without him um but it's He's very confident he's coming back next year. I know that was a question at times, and we don't even know. Maybe it's two or three more years at this point. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate, I'm still in the camp that he's not going to play this year. Like I just don't see it. Like If he does, I'll 100% take the L on this. I just don't see him playing this year. Um, that don't go is... stash him in your fantasy leagues. Even if he does end right. up playing in week 16, 17, I'm not touching it. But I did want to bring up fantasy okay because i don't think we've gotten to the point where we're dropping garrett wilson or Brees hall or any of those guys uh because of they are still one play away but like we're not starting them with confidence anymore i think we've gotten to oh, that point no. for sure yeah 100 but, but those guys let's just say he does come back garrett wilson and rogers fantasy playoffs like that could be you know the, there's always a winter wire addition or someone that really helps, you know, carry that gets hot right around the fantasy playoffs that helps win a division or win your league. Essentially it happens every year. We see it all the time. Yep. And this year, it could be a guy that's already on your roster with a, a guy like Garrett Wilson. If Rogers come back. And again, that is a huge if. That's true. Something you have to just watch as you go through. It's not like that's somebody that you can go out and trade for anymore. Trade deadlines are passed. I, I believe everywhere now last week was probably the latest week you're going to see trade deadlines. Um, 
But if you do happen to see him sneak through to the waiver wire, maybe there's somebody who doesn't listen to us who's saying, you know, hold on. Maybe they just get fed up. They have to fill a bye week in these next two weeks because, I mean, this week there's six buys. Um, keep an eye out. See if he ends up getting dropped. That could be somebody that you should add. Even if he doesn't have a rebound, You'd be. I would rather have him on my bench if I saw an opportunity and never play him as opposed to, you know, let him sit on the waiver wire and have him come burn me in a fantasy semifinal. 100% agree. Um, next up on the news docket is Jonathan Taylor uh, has come on strong the last couple of weeks, finished last week's game, and then all of a sudden was like, hey, my thumb hurts. And uh, ended up having to get surgery on his thumb. Good news is it seems he has avoided IR. Hopefully you weren't one of the 49% of people in leagues that dropped Zach Moss because he goes back into – being a solid option for you in his absence. Uh, but Jonathan Taylor should be back sooner than later, which is great news. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to try to get into the playoffs without him, but it sounds like fantasy playoffs, he'll be back. It's a two to three week absence from what I understand. So missing week 13 and 14, potentially week 15. Um, I'm encouraged by the fact that he played through it in the whole second half last week and nothing was ever really brought up about it. I mean, obviously getting a surgery kind of changes things when it comes to like, it's not like, oh, it's a pain tolerance deal. There's something that has to heal, but it does sound very minor when it consider when you're considering it's a injury that required surgery and he's not going to hit IR. For sure. And then you got to go bird shirt on, even though you're a Chargers fan, a little bit confusing to me, but a former Philadelphia Eagle has been released uh he is not was a member of the arizona cardinals i'm talking about zach Ertz. if you have not heard zach Ertz asked for his release so he could join a contending team this year so my first question is and some people if you're listening to this later on friday you might already know the answers does he get claimed on waivers uh, if he does get claimed to have about a two and a half million dollars still left to him for the team claiming him which could price him out of waivers at this point but do you think a team takes a flyer on him or do they think he this is a guy that has enough respect in the league that a team might just be like, all right, you wanted out to be with a contender. We'll let you pick your team. I think it's going to be that. I don't see him getting claimed on waivers because of the respect and because of the cap hit. Um, but he's not going to be unsigned for long. There's a couple of teams that I'm looking at that could add him. One, obviously, being the Eagles. I mean, they're not going to be able to get him in the building to play this week, which is most likely going to be their last week without Dallas Goddard. But I don't think they would complain about going back to being able to play two tight end with Goddard Nerds out there for the stretch run of the season. Uh, another one is the Baltimore Ravens because they lost Mark Andrews. Isaiah likely obviously had a decent game last week, but I don't think they're going to complain about being able to add a veteran into their tight end room. Um, so those are the two that I'm really focusing on for Zach Ertz. Um, I don't know if it makes sense for him to go to the Chiefs but sit behind Kelsey. If it makes sense for him to go to the Bengals as they're like you know still struggling at quarterback, I don't think that they would go all in and try to add like another weapon like that per se. Um, San Francisco, same thing with Kittle. But um, those two teams are the two that stood out to me specifically. No, I think you're right. You're talking this the straight contenders. Uh, that we're talking about now the lions they have sam laporta bills they have even though they're not technically a contender i think they're in the hunt race they have dalton kincaid dallas really seems to like what they have with uh jake ferguson right now and i'm interested if dallas would... were to offer or it's a contract would he even take it that was that was literally the next <laughs> words out of my mouth like would he even play for dallas that's not the question i think there's one team and it's the team i represent that could get involved I think if they want him, they're going to have to do more of the waiver wire. I don't think they're in the contending option, but I'm about the Green Bay Packers because Luke Musgrave, uh, last year, if you missed it, did lacerate his kidney and ended up on IR, leaving just third round pick Tucker Craft and undrafted free agent Ben Sims as the two tight ends on the roster. Uh, and they've had interest in tight ends before, whether it was Zach Ertz when he was leaving Philly. Darren Waller, when he was in Las Vegas, they made a couple of trade attempts where they've been looking for a veteran tight end um, for a couple of years now. Again, I think this team is like really into their young guys and isn't going to do them, but I think that could be the third sleeper team. Uh, but I do believe that, honestly, it's Tyler Roseman. We're going to get the picture of Ertz and Shaq Leonard signing their contracts, high-fiving, shaking hands, 
one on each hand next week. So or later this yeah. week. Yeah. I mean, we don't talk much defense, but Shaq Leonard, who was dropped by the Colts last week, we mentioned it a little bit on the show. Um I believe we did actually. I think he got cut right before we recorded last week. I remember he talking did. about it. Um, he visited with the Eagles and the Cowboys. So it seems like that's a divisional feud, not only for, you know, that game coming up in a week and a half now, but trying to get a veteran linebacker in the building too. So when Ertz signs with the Eagles and Leonard signs with the Cowboys and he hits that, he tackles them across the middle one time. It's going to be extra motivation for the Eagles and Cowboys is what you're saying. Yeah, because that's exactly what that rivalry needs. I mean, there's a couple of rivalries in the NFL that stand out as, you know, top notch, and that's one of them. So I don't think they need any more fuel on the fire, but here we go. All right, that pretty much wraps up the the big news headlines. Uh, there's some other stuff, but we'll wait for more information to come out before we talk about that one, at least. Uh, if you know, you know. Uh, you ready to preview the rest of the fantasy? Play- what week are we in? I don't even remember what week we're in, so I need your help. We're in week 13, and we're going to break it down right now. Week 13, six teams on bye, because I know you miss bye weeks during Thanksgiving, because I sure did. (laughs) Um, Six teams would be the Ravens, the Bills, the Bears, Raiders, Vikings, and Giants. I mean, good news, three of those teams don't have a ton of fantasy assets being the... Go ahead, repeat them. Ravens, Bills, Bears, Raiders, Vikings, Giants. So you're missing what did I, what big I say? quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean, we're not missing anybody on the Giants besides Saquon. We're not missing anybody on the Bears besides DJ Moore. I guess Cole can out a little bit. I don't know. And maybe Justin Fields. Yeah. With his rushing ability. Um, but that Monday night game was so bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, the Vikings so, haven't even had a whole lot lately because Madison's been and I mean, yeah, Jordan Addison um, getting J. Jeff back in week 14. But that's looking ahead. I mean, there's some there's a lot of teams. There's going to be a lot of people in the collective, but it's at least it's not super powerhouse teams besides the Bills and Ravens. Well, I think th- I think it's pretty powerhouse in the wide receiver department. You're going to lose Stephon Diggs. You're going to lose Devontae Adams. You're going to lose, obviously, J- Jay Jeff was hoping to be back this week. He was activated off the 21 day list, but they're on bye. So you would have lost him if they didn't have a bye. Um, like you said, you missed DJ Moore. That's another big time wide receiver. So there's a lot of receivers out there. Zay Flowers has been coming on strong. You're going to miss Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. And these are crucial weeks. Uh, you got, like I mentioned at the top, two weeks left in the fantasy football playoffs. And a lot of things can happen. You know, you might be the eight seed. You can still make a way in. You might be looking like you're going to get a bye. You can still make your way out of the playoffs completely. So a lot of things can happen and setting your lineups, especially this week. And next week there's buys, but it's Cardinals commanders. So it's like, okay, we're basically not having a buy. (laughs) But this week is the week to get through. And that first matchup, man, this first matchup is not great. It's the, what's, what's the line? 40 and a half. No, I mean, what what's the storyline that Cody likes to mention in games like this? Oh, West Coast, I do. Uh, West Coast teams coming <laughs> east on uh, at one o'clock. So yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, Bailey Zappi uh, has not officially <laughs> been named the starter, uh, but somebody from the Patriots beat tweeted out that uh, Zappi and Cunningham, they're that guy. He was the only two taking reps, and Mac Jones was just watching. So it sounds like it'll be Bailey Zappi this week against the Chargers. My question is, which Chargers team shows up? Yeah, that's always the problem. And I mean, they have something else going against them with being the West Coast team coming East. I mean, I'd pick on you every single time for it, but there's there's plenty of times where those teams just completely flop. This The, the Chargers are the worst team at being good in the league because they i want to believe they actually are a good team they have so many good pieces and then they just can't win they find so many ways to lose (laughs) no i think you're right here and so demario demario douglas of the patriots he has been dnp um and then keenan allen has also been dnp but he's been held out of practice most weeks you're still playing keenan allen Mm -hmm. as long as he's good to go 
and you can play Austin Eckler this week uh, for sure. And it is interesting that the uh, the line uh, yesterday when I saw this or heard someone talk about it was six. It's now down to five and a half. Uh, so it's getting a little bit closer. Maybe people are starting to buy into the West Coast coming east at one o'clock thing. But anyone else from this matchup or can we just like move on? Like, are you playing Gerald Everett? You playing Hunter Henry? Reminder Stevenson, you're playing him. I'm, I forgot to mention him outside of those yeah. guys. Um, I'm playing Hunter Henry in a couple of leagues where I'm devastated by bye weeks uh, because he's in the bucket. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I mean, between bye weeks and injuries, it's brutal at tight end in some of my dynasty leagues, but nothing I can do. Um, and the position. And the position. Yeah, like whatever. I mean, there was a week I had to play Daniel Bellinger in one dynasty league that just tells you how bad like some things have been so hunter Henry's that's a tight end for the that. giants not a made-up name for anyone that cares he was i mean he was fantasy relevant for like what two weeks last year yeah he got a touchdown yeah that one time um <laughs> but seriously it, no it's, disrespect no no disrespect at all he's normally a tight end too he is starting with darren waller on injured reserve but the giants right now are kind of a mess at the moment too um yeah, no, I think we covered everything there. We can stop talking about this game. We can move on to the Detroit Lions going down south to the New Orleans Saints. Saints have an interesting wide receiver situation this week because obviously Michael Thomas on an injured reserve. Rashid Shahid did not participate in practice on Thursday. Chris Olave in concussion protocol, but he is limited. Uh, so there's a chance he's going to get back. Like I normally say, if I see limited on Thursday, uh, there's a pretty good chance they're going to clear by Sunday. Occasionally they do not. So keep an eye on it. But chance that Olave is the only real healthy wide receiver in that wide receiver room this week if he does get back. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised with all the injuries that they're at that the Lions only Saints plus four. Like, I know they're at home. The Lions got beat on Thanksgiving. But I'm kind of surprised that it's that close of a spread. I'm not going to lie. Especially with an over-under yeah. of 47 points. Like, what have the Saints done to make you think that uh, they can keep up with the Lions the last couple of weeks? Like, that team has looked really bad. I mean, they lost the Falcons last week. Yeah, I mean... That was divisional. I'm thinking that's I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this is a them being high on the Saints for some reason or them jumping off the Lions bandwagon way too fast because there's no reason to jump off the Lions bandwagon after they lost a divisional game um, and they just can't win on Thanksgiving with a waxing gibbous moon like that was something that has been going around our group chat for the last week and a half. If you guys do not know what we're talking about, go search the meme. Yeah, this is my last episode. It. I'm going to be an astronomer from now on. <laughs> man <laughs> but anyway um i don't know exactly what it is with that line but i'm with you i would slam saint i mean lions minus four uh in this one if i would you know looking at it from a betting side um uh when it comes to the saints if they're going to be missing olave on top of the other two this is a slam dunk play Taysom hill game because they're going to have to line him up at wide receiver. They're going to do more things with him on the ground because they need people that can touch the ball. Um, I think you can still play him at tight end regardless, but I think his outlook's even better if there's no one else playing because somebody's got to touch the ball. Yeah, I'm going to give you another name. I, I do like that. Uh, and maybe this is too deep for your redraft leagues, but if you're in Dynasty and you have him, it might be a week to play him. But definitely a guy I'd look for in DFS, and that is rookie... A.T. Perry, um, just because of all the injuries, if, you know, Shahid doesn't go literally, let's say Shahid and Olave don't go, the three wide receivers left are A.T. Perry, Keith Kirkwood, and Lynn Bowden Jr. So Lynn Bowden was that guy that was relevant in Miami one week that one time. Right, exactly. And he's like a uh, kick returner running back wide receiver mesh. So he's not even true wide receiver from what I understand. So I think. You can play. I like playing Takes Hill this week. I think Jawan Johnson uh, could be involved in the tight end bucket this week as well. Um, and like I mentioned, A.T. Perry is that sneaky guy that could be in line for 13 targets just out of necessity. Uh, so have some fun with that one. 
definitely one of my DSF, DFS plays of the week. Nice. And then Lions side of the ball, um, Amra St. Brown, both the running backs, Montgomery, who's a full participant in practice on Thursday. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, still good to go. You could play Jared Goff if you need a tight end. I mean, a quarterback streamer with these guys out. I think that's still fine, even though it isn't a way game. Um, he's found so ugly ways to I, score points these last few weeks. So I did want to ask you about Garrett, not Garrett, Jarrett, not Jared, Jared. Wow. I'm really, he went to Jared, Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Okay. <laughs> I did go. <laughs> nah, I'm an every kiss begins with K kind of guy. Hashtag not a sponsor, but <laughs> he has been struggling with specifically fumbles and turnovers as of late. So, are you still – and the Saints are getting by because their defense is, you know, okay. Jared Goff is now down to – starting out so strong, down to QB 14 on the season. Uh, he's had a – you know, he's still been – like you mentioned, he's been able to find ways to get some decent outputs. He had 18 points last week uh, despite the, the turnovers. Only 13 the week before. Uh, a 9 and a 12 in the last five weeks. So, like, he's been struggling a little bit since that hot start. How confident are you in Jared Goff this week? Is it like a desperation streamer or like, hey, this is one of my streams of the week? He's not one of my streams of the week. It's probably more of a desperation streamer, but I think I still like him over some of the other guys you're going to find on the wire. Like I'm trying to look down here and see. Do you want me to? I mean, you can give me some names if you want to. Okay, so. Jared Goff or Kyler Murray? I'll start with the hardest one. I'm probably going to ask you. That one is tough. Um, who's Murray playing here? Steelers coming up. That one's tough. I might actually go Jared Goff with the tough defense matchup. And we're going to get to right, more well, about the Cardinals wide receivers coming up too. That's another one. Um, what about Gardner Minshew against the Titans? I would still probably go with Goff. Worth noting there. Uh, what about um, Baker Mayfield versus the Panthers? Give me. I'll go sleeper there. I'll go Baker uh, with the matchup. I don't think the Bucks are good enough to go up big, which helps Baker in that case. All right, I'll ask you two more just to keep it. Matt Stafford versus the Browns and that defense. Give me Goff. And Jordan Love versus the Chiefs. I have to say Love because I'm actually considering Love right now. You can help me now at 7.32 p.m. Eastern time. Jordan Love or uh, Geno Smith in the league. So I don't want to like bear the lead for the Packers Chiefs game. We're going to talk about at the end of the podcast because it's Sunday night game. Uh, but I believe the Chiefs have only allowed one team to score over 21 points all season. Uh, so... Their defense is what's been playing really good. So, oh man, but the Cowboys, I'd probably go love still just because the Cowboys, like, they're going to get two picks or a kind of fumble. Like, so I would guess I would go Jordan Love. Okay. Good to know. Let me go fix my lineup while you move us on. All right. So, next matchup. I think we covered everything there. If we didn't, reach us out in the DMs and be like, bro, stay on track next time and talk about our Saints. <laughs> uh, George, why you look it up? I'm just going to talk about this whole game and then we'll just, I'll pick you up in the next one. Uh, so no, the next I, yeah, the Falcons, I, you're fine. I'm done, but you're, you can still talk about it. <laughs> uh, Falcons jets over under 34 points. Jets are two point underdogs. Uh, Tim Boyle will start again this week. Uh, Desmond Ritter will start again this week. We talked about a little bit at the top of the show about what can happen in the fantasy playoffs. Like, I don't feel great about playing anybody in this matchup. And I'm still going to play Bijan, but against this defense, I don't love it. They are a little bit more deceptible against the run than they are the pass. So that's why I like Bijan. He's the only Falcon I would play. Uh, you might be forced into playing Brees Hall and or Garrett Wilson uh, this week just because of 60s on by. Uh, but if I had to, if I had the option, I would not play either of them. 
And I said, if I have the option, because I am playing Brees Hall in one league this week. So I understand the pain here. And just hopefully he's the guy that gets the touchdown. Because Garrett Wilson caught the touchdown last week to save his day. Brees Hall had it the week before. So which guy gets the touchdown out of those two is basically the question. Anything else about this game you want to chime in about? Nope. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. All right, cool. I do next want to move one. us on to the next game. Um, yeah. Cardinals, Steelers. And I want to talk about, again, wide receivers. We talked about how many wide receivers were missing on bye week on the top. Um, Cardinals have DNPs from Hollywood Brown and Michael Wilson. Their top two targets right now. And there's been a guy who you might remember looking back to last season, had a little bit of a stretch where we thought he could be a breakout, ends up kind of busting, who has been fairly solid since Kyler Murray's been back. Cody, do you remember the name Greg Dorch by chance? Of course, you were obsessed with him. I was obsessed with him. Greg Dorch has 10.6 and 10.2 points and a half PPR since Kyler Murray's return. Now could be a wide receiver one this week if miss if they're missing Hollywood and Wilson. At least a DFS play. Um, if not, somebody you could flex if you're desperate for a wide receiver in your redraft league. So you're telling me somebody is going to win money in DFS this week starting Greg Dorch and A.T. Perry? Heck yeah, they are. <laughs> all right. You heard it here first on the Couch Gems <laughs> podcast. I don't hate it with all the injuries there. Uh, reminder, with McBride being limited, Zach Ertz is no longer on the team as he, they granted his wave request. Uh, the Steelers, though, I do want to talk a little bit about them. Uh, without Matt Canada, they put up over 400 yards for the first time this season. And it is only one week. And we talk about how often spikes when head coaches or coordinators get fired and offense. We'll see now that there's some tape on there, what they like to do, how the teams adapt and change over the next couple of weeks. So I don't want to get too overexcited um, about any one player, but I'm going to do it anyways. And that is Pat Fryermuth. Uh, I believe he had 11 targets in that game. Uh, and the yeah. reason that gets me excited is because tight ends are not great, especially with Mark Andrews out. Like you have TJ Hawkinson and Travis Kelsey when Taylor Swift's in the stands balling out this year. And outside of that, so to be able to get a guy, and I know he was not like the most available guy uh, because a lot of people had him on the IR spot. And didn't want to cut him. They want to see what he looked like that week. But I know he was available in all the leagues. And to get a guy that that might see, you know, eight plus targets a week at the tight end position, uh, could be a steal. And I think you can put him right back in your lineup this week. What I've heard from like the X's and O's part of it is the Steelers did not throw the ball down the middle of the field with Matt Canada there. Um, so this week. They spam the middle of the field and you saw it with Pratt Fryer Muse 11 targets. And that's why I have hope that this is going to continue. Even if teams try to start to bracket it out, like there's going to be other things that get open. They're going to, they're not going to be able to cover it. If the Steelers play this properly, Fryer Muse could be that guy. If you added him on waivers, especially that could be a difference maker in the fantasy playoffs. Um, I did. When you hinted earlier about another news story, we didn't talk about, did it happen to include a Steelers wide receiver? No. Okay, but I thought, do you want to mention a little bit? Did you see going around how Deontay Johnson uh, had his little hissy fit on a fumble play and just didn't chase a ball out and it almost gave up a touchdown the other way? I did not see that. You did not. Oh my gosh. Well, if you haven't seen it, go check it out on Twitter. If I find it, I will go retweet it. It was basically he had a target in the end zone that ended up not being a catch he got mad about it for some reason i'm not remembering right now next play they ran the ball to the middle with jalen warren towards his side of the field he just took two steps and stopped didn't try to throw a block there was a fumble that landed probably two feet away from him he turned away from it the other team picked it up and started to run it back and he just kind of walked away from the play without even he said he didn't realize the fumble was there but it was so close to him i don't understand how you couldn't have I, I totally missed that one. I did not see that one, uh, but I'll have to look that out on Twitter. I did want to bring, bring go back to Pat Frank one more time because you mentioned the middle of the field. Uh, I know he also got to – they lined him up in this play like a big slot 
receiver more than he has all season. Mostly they've been keeping him in line. And you're like, well, he's a tight end. Of course he's going to play a lot. Like a lot of the good tight ends, George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson, uh, they, Mark Andrews, they line up in this slot pretty often. Uh, it's part of being diverse in you know, personnel and stuff like that. But that makes him you know, more or less the third receiving option, which under Matt Canada, the slot a lot of the time was, the th- was Allen Robinson and occasionally mm-hmm. Calvin Austin the third. So I, know, I really do like Pat Fryer moving forward, and hopefully you were able to grab him on waivers this past week. Or if you stashed him, hopefully it pays off for you. Yes, sir. Anything else, Cardinal Steelers? Should I move us on? Let's move on. All right. We got a divisional matchup up next with the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. So Titans coming off a win, and they're only one-point underdogs facing Indianapolis, who we would probably consider the better team right now. So that was a little bit closer than I expected, but they're showing some respect to Tennessee. Um, Traylon Burks, full participant in practice, coming back from a concussion. Looks like he's going to be finally back this week. Colt side of the ball, we mentioned Jonathan Taylor is going to miss multiple weeks with his injury. So Zach Moss back in business. Hope you grabbed him off of waivers as well. If you got Zach Moss and Pratt Frymuth this week, number one, I'm surprised your uh, league is not as active as it is. But number two, you just cashed in big in week 13. (laughs) Yeah, and so like we mentioned, we don't know how much uh, time Taylor is going to miss, but with Zach Moss there, he's definitely – in your lineups this week for sure uh he's still running back 22 on the season uh so after a couple weeks of not getting many opportunities because of that he did not and i want to go back to that week five matchup uh which was still zach moss where he had 23 carries for 165 yards two touchdowns and two catches for 30 yards putting up a 31 and a half point fantasy day against this tennessee titans team now We've talked about how this team can definitely be beaten more through the pass as of late. I'm not expecting another 31 point performance, but at least he has some proof that he can play against this team. It's divisional. They know everybody a little bit better and could still be a solid starter, but because this team can be taken uh, advantage of in the passing game, as of most of the season, uh, Michael Pittman, definitely in your lineup, uh, consistent PPR guy for sure. Uh, but Josh Downs, I think he's still a guy that you can play this week. I think he saw, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was eight or nine targets last week. Uh, 13. Becoming more and more. 13, okay. I, I was I surprised because thir- he actually only caught five of them, um, but he tied Pittman for the lead in targets. I was already looking that up. I had that teed up if you weren't going to say it, so thank you. Um, <laughs> yep, we're on the same page here. Yeah, we are. So, yeah, Josh Downs, he's the guy that I, I like this week as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of positive signs for the Colts. If only Anthony Richardson could have stayed healthy, we don't know what that offense would have looked like. But I think it's actually been more beneficial for the wide receivers in fantasy, having Gardner Minshew in there instead of Anthony Richardson. Um, I'm good with this game if you are. We didn't even talk a single Titan. Derrick Henry. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I don't think Will Levis is in a conversation for streaming. No, I mean, you could play um, D hop if you're in a desperation spot there as well. I know there's a couple of leagues where he's kind of in flex consideration, but he's kind of been inconsistent, Um, but he has been better with Levis in there than he was with Tannehill. So that's always encouraging. Yeah. And just for the record, uh, because this is a divisional matchup, uh, Derek Henry only had 13 carries for 43 yards in their first matchup. So they were able to contain him. It's now a little bit colder out. So we'll see if that can, that can change. And then you mentioned um, DeAndre Hopkins, who's currently the wide receiver 25 on the season. That game against the Indianapolis Colts uh, wasn't his best game, but it was one of his better games where he had eight receptions on 11 targets for 144 yards. So 14 standard points, 18 regular points, or half-point PPR points. Uh, He just missed out on the touchdown. So. Uh, his second highest output of the season came against this Colts. So I do think he is in at least flat consideration this week. That was still with Ryan Tannehill, though. So remember that. Yeah, that's true. That offense has changed a decent amount with Levis in there. And there's, I'm sure there's been snow in Vermont this week because there was snow in Pennsylvania this week. So 
I think we're looking good for Derrick Henry, at least now, probably moving forward the rest of the season as he always has gotten stronger as the season's gone on. And he's proven to me that these last few weeks have been, you know, making steps in the right direction. Um, don't get too frustrated if you're out there. If you're a Derrick Henry owner, I'm talking specifically to you, Andrew, who I know has been in our DMs. Like, can I just bench Derrick Henry now? I would not advise to bench Derrick Henry. Well, I need to know the other. Like, if, so in this matchup right here, would you play Derrick Henry or Zach Moss? If you had to choose between one, I feel like I'd yeah. be going against everything I normally say by saying Zach Moss because, like, it's a you know, I always like play your studs. Derrick Henry's one of those guys, but Moss has actually been a stud without Taylor. So I would go ahead and say Moss, but I would hope that you had, I mean, if you had some like other really good wide running back one to go with those two, props to you. I would be like yeah play moss but you probably have someone else that you'd want to play henry over for a running back too yeah and derrick henry is still i believe you know running back nine on the season in half point ppr format so he's still one of the top guys the problem with him is the consistency issues he had 19 points the last week and then two weeks of four and two then he had his three week run of getting over 12 three weeks in a row then had a six pointer Big week two pointer. Like he's just been very up and down. Uh, and you have to think that divisional game that he'll be relied on more. And I, I think I'm with you. I would, I would probably, I have a hard time benching him. And I know that's mm-hmm. probably not the best fantasy advice because sometimes you have to know when to cut ties. But I have a hard time benching Derrick Henry. And I feel like because Tyler's a Titans fan, uh, of the three of us of at the Calcium podcast, I've always been the, the lowest on Derrick Henry. And that sounds so weird to say, like he's a great running back, but like, you know, I would still keep him in the lip. And true. There's my advice. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's gotten over 75 yards on the ground all but two weeks since week five. Um, so, I mean, like he's still producing, Obviously, he's a little bit more touchdown dependent than he was before. But I mean, when you see the name Derrick Henry, you keep thinking like, oh, I want this top three pick running back Derrick Henry. You also have to remember he was drafted in the second round a lot of places this year. We drafted him perfectly for where he's been producing so far. Um, But it's just hard to see the name Derrick Henry and realize that he's a running back two now. He's not a running back one in fantasy anymore, but he's producing well for that running back two tag. For sure. All right, you tried to move us on once. I'll move us on <laughs> for real this time. The Dolphins, Commanders, Commanders, nine and a half point underdogs, over under 49 and a half. There's not much to say about the Commanders. Uh, the one guy that you can play, well, there's probably more than one guy that you can play, but the one guy I want to mention for the Commanders side is uh, Brian Robinson Jr., uh, cur- cu- currently RB5 on the season. Uh, feels like the biggest, like, what? Because of how bad the commanders have been. But, yeah, so you can keep playing him this week. Uh, and if you see him going up against him, realize that's not a mistake, that he's actually been good, for at least for fantasy, this week. But how about wide receivers? Are you playing McLaurin, Watson, any of them? Sam Howe's a streamer. What are your thoughts on the rest of the commanders? Um, I feel like, uh, McLaurin's one of those guys that I'm never going to feel comfortable playing. Um, but I think this isn't a bad spot to play him. The Dolphins defense is, you know, not bad, but the fact that they could be down should actually mean more favorable game script for McLaurin than Brian Robinson. Please play Brian Robinson still not saying to bench him, but that's a positive on the Terry McLaurin side. So I think I'm good with that. Um, Sam Howell. Even though he's a top five, I still believe he's top five quarterback. He's at least like five, six, something like that right now. Um, He's a curious case to me because he is not the, okay, but he's not the boom quarterback. Like interesting. So there ends up being three different leagues where we had players that had three quarterbacks and the three quarterbacks were Sam Howell, Kyler Murray, and Justin Fields. And in at least two of them, Sam Howell got cut. Now, when you look at it, it's like, why are they cutting quarterback seven? 
when you look deeper into his stats, he's been a very consistent quarterback. He's somebody who you can put in your lineup and be like, I'm confident he's going to get me 15. He could get me up to 20. That's literally where it ends. He is a high floor, low ceiling quarterback. That, as opposed to like a lot of these guys would rather play Kyler Murray with the chance of him getting two rushing touchdowns and putting up 28. You'd rather play Justin Fields with the chance of him running for 100 and getting you 30. Like, he has been so high in the rankings because he's consistent. And with that being said, when you're missing quarterbacks on by, that's somebody I wouldn't mind throwing in my lineup. if I'm trying to get a bye week, Phil, but if you're trying to find your quarterback one for the fantasy playoffs, I like the high upside guys better. I think that's some great advice. And typically when a team is really bad, we just like, don't talk about them. In this case, the dolphins are really good in a plus matchup. So like if it says MIA, not missing an action, but Miami next to their name, unless their name is something Smythe, you can be in your lineup. Amen to that. But uh, just keep an eye on the A Chan Mostert thing uh, since they're both beat up. It looks like they're both going to go. They both can be in your lineup if they do. Uh, but just keep an eye on it because I know A Chan's missed some time and Mostert did sustain an injury on Black Friday. So, which that was another doozy of a game. Next up is Broncos Texans, and this game was actually flexed to one o'clock. The reverse flex to get more eyes on it. Uh, with the Broncos on their win streak, the Texans balling out behind CJ Stroud over under 47 and a half. Texans are three point favorites at home. Uh, the big news here is watching Tank Dell. Uh, Tank Dell did not practice on Wednesday, uh, he was limited on Thursday. Seems like he's going to be good to go, but it is a calf injury, so just monitor that one. And he has been lights out as a part of this run that the Texans have been on the last couple of weeks. Uh, whether he goes or not, that doesn't change my opinion. CJ Stroud is a rest of season starter for you. Uh, high upside is basically what CJ Stroud is compared to George's talk right there. Yep. Um, I, I don't have anybody on the list. And I know Damian Pierce has been banged up the last couple of weeks. So am I forgetting him moving to IR? Is he back practicing or... I believe he's good to go. I think he actually played last week, but he was number two behind Singletary. I'll double check that while you keep going. That was my next question. Uh, where was he? behind? Because Singletary had been actually playing really well in his uh, Pierce's absence. So if they did play last week, just ignore what I forgot. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. Uh, Thanksgiving week, outside of the Thursday games, is one of the hardest weeks for me to watch football just because trying to get caught up on everything for the week. And uh, so I still watched a lot, but remembering exactly who played might not be uh, my best week on that. And I apologize for not being up to par, but George, did he play last week? Uh, you hit me about 10 seconds too short here. I am. I tried. I tried to vamp stats so right now. Long. All right, cool. Um, so we did have both Pierce and Singletary. They both actually did poorly. Um, Singletary, six carries, 18 yards. Pierce, five carries, 14 yards. Singletary so did have either. six catches for 54, so we're though. We're playing Singletary. Singletary yeah. still did out snap and out touch when you consider also having seven targets. Uh, their running game was just not effective. And it's funny because they're coming off of a game where Singletary ran for like 175 or something. It was ridiculous. Uh, so their run game's inconsistent. And their offensive line's not great, and that kind of goes along with their, you know, whole entire motto the last few years. It's getting better. Uh, they're a better pass-blocking team than a run-blocking team, though. So their run game's going to be inconsistent. Um, playing Singletary, not playing Pierce. Wouldn't drop Pierce, but I don't love his outlook. I gotcha. And then Dalton Schultz is DNP. We have to watch out if you need a new tight end for the bucket, if he goes, I think you can keep him in your lineup because he's been playing well the last couple of weeks. The Broncos, they're interesting to me as they have not uh, – let me rephrase that. They're interesting because they have been playing a lot better. They're on a little bit of a win streak here, uh, getting Sean Payton and Coach of the Year consideration. But in terms of fantasy, there's not a single Bronco player that I want to play. Are you feeling the there's same There's not thing? a single – there's not a single one that you want to play, but I'm just trying to take a peek here because Cortland Sutton is actually like right in line with both Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley. He's right between both of them. He scored more points than Terry McLaurin, and he's only scored four less points than Chris Olave. Those are all guys that we've considered in our lineup like most of the season. I know Calvin Ridley has been the 
curious case of like he has big points and then he does nothing and we had like a feud against him for a few weeks in the beginning of the year or in the middle of the year but like when you look at it that way Cortland sutton's actually not been horrible um in a week with a lot of wide receiver by somebody that could sneak into your flex um i don't personally like him as a guy i'm relying on but i had to give at least a little bit of respect because he's putting together a decent season i appreciate i appreciate that and i think I'm out on the running backs. There seems to be like Javante should be the guy, but he's been struggling. They're still getting Samaj P. Ryan involved. And then the dude I can never pronounce his name is still out there. Jaleel McLaughlin. That dude. So it's like a three-headed running back by committee, which is even worse <laughs> for fantasy. Uh, Russell Wilson or Jared Goff streaming this week? Let Russ cook. All right. Let Russ cook. Probably because you're expecting a shootout of a game with the tech. Yeah, that's which, exactly what it is. <laughs> I would I would agree with you on that one. Let's move to four o'clock, bud. I don't have the list in front of me though, so I need you to tell me who the next game is. <laughs> the first game is exciting. The o- only the second game that has under 40 on the over under. I think there's only two all week. This one is Panthers Buccaneers. I mentioned Baker Mayfield, potential stream. Obviously, hopefully you find someone a little bit higher on the list. Um, but that's because I think that the Bucks are gonna be up but not be blowing out the Panthers. Um, interested to see if the Panthers have that little bit of a boost because of the coaching change. Um, but we'll see. Buccaneers side of the ball, playing Evans, playing Rashad White. Um, could play Kate Otten in the bucket. Anyone else that I missed? Uh, Rashad White and Evans and Otten. I like those this week. Uh, Panthers, Godwin just hasn't been quite as good. And I mean, like normally it's been Godwin Evans side by side. I think Evans has kind of broken away this year. I, I, I agree with that. And it's probably his last year in Tampa Bay too. So yep. we'll see where he ends up next year, but that's for off season talk on the Panthers side. We talk often, and you mentioned it already about how there's often these boosts when a new head coach comes in uh, or an interim coach. We saw it with the Raiders earlier this year. Um, Will we see it with the Carolina Panthers this year after Frank Reich was fired? Uh, I actually don't know if we talked about that because that just happened this week, and I think that missed the news segment. Yeah, so we Frank did Reich was Frank Reich was fired. <laughs> I feel like it was because they switched back play callers and then back and stuff like that. I feel like was, the writing was on the wall. So I probably just assumed that it didn't happen or it happened already. Uh, but no, it happened this week. So if you Frank Reich, obviously, out the door. Uh, and... Let's see. The interim head coach is Chris Tabor. I believe they're special teams guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also fired uh, one of the McCown brothers that was the quarterback's coach. Uh, I Deuce believe Saley. it was actually Josh. Yeah, I think Josh. it's Josh. Um, and then Josh Daly as well, yes. So they were going. So there's a lot of mix-ups there. And I'm saying all that because – we're expecting we we've seen those boosts before, and I would not be surprised if the Panthers at least cover, if not win this game outright, um, just because we've seen that happen before and the Buccaneers have been struggling. Uh, but that still doesn't say, hey, I'm going to try to ride this boost and play a Tuba Hubbard or Miles Sanders this week. No, the Buccaneers run defense is still very good. Oh, let me see if I can get Adam Thielen back involved. No, I, I didn't want to play Adam Thielen to start the season. He had a really strong five weeks and has really tailed off. Uh, since then Bryce Young definitely not in the streamer option there so there's no Panther that I want to play even if you're expecting a boost uh, or a flat in the pan game from them this week the one that I do want to just mention like Miles Sanders I've seen Miles Sanders start to get dropped in places I'm on board like there's volume there so maybe it's not a bad idea if you have the bench spot to keep him stashed uh, I personally don't see a situation where I want to play him at all again this year Chuba Hubbard I think there is situations where you could play him again this year. Uh, and I want to keep him stashed on the bench, but I don't want to play him against in a bad matchup. He's going to be a matchup based flex play. Bold of you, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's super bold when I'm talking about a guy who had just short of a hundred yards from scrimmage last week in a touchdown. Like he hasn't been somebody who's been flashy, but he's been decent. And he's somebody I want to keep my options open with if I have the ability to, uh, even though I hope I have better options on my roster. 
I would hope so too. Let's talk about the next one. Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Los Angeles Rams. Uh let's start with the Cleveland Browns. Uh Thompson Dorian Thompson Robinson did not participate with a concussion Wednesday, not trending that he will play on Sunday, which means the return of Joe Flacco. No, it's not PJ Walker who beat the San Francisco 49ers. It is Joe Flacco recently signed to the practice squad, then to the active roster, and does not look uh Cream Hunt did not practice, so he'll be a little bit banged up there. Uh Cooper and Joku did not practice Wednesday with the you know rest slash other things designated, which we talked about is so confusing. Like yes. is it rest or is he injured? I don't understand. But let's try to the point. Uh so what are you doing with the Joe Flacco led Cleveland Browns? Um <laughs> You're playing, I don't even know if I really want to say you're playing Jerome Ford, but I mean, he's probably the safest option. And I think you might get a couple extra carries if Hunt doesn't go. So if there's going to be a week to play Ford, this is your week. Um, and I think in Joku, if he goes, is still a decent tight end. He's actually been one of the better floor tight ends over the last month and a half. Um, I think his worst game over that stretch was about seven and a half. So when you're talking about a position that struggles so much, that's still not bad. Bring in a new quarterback as well, safety valve. Hopefully that's the Njoku thing. Um, I don't like anybody else. Me neither. Me <laughs> neither. But you're I right. I was hoping it he wasn't just me with the Amari Cooper thing, because you know I can't play Amari Cooper ever, but like especially you're on right. a fourth string quarterback. Since week seven, it's been over seven and a half, and since week four, there's only been one game under seven and a half. So Njoku has been a little bit solid and maybe a guy that we should pay a little bit more attention to, and maybe he starts to creep his way to sitting on the rim of the bucket and not actually in the bucket. <laughs> I like this analogy, on, just getting different layers. <laughs> we're going to keep it. We're going to make a T-shirt, and it's just going to be the tight end bucket, uh, and it's going to be on our Teespring coming soon. That we don't have Teespring right now, but coming soon. We'll get that. Uh, Ram side, Cooper Cup was a full participant on Wednesday. Now, last week we had the we had a fan reach in, which we appreciate, asking us some advice. And when they asked us, I don't have the the exact start sit in front of us. Um, and out of the options, we collectively agreed to say bench Cooper Cup. And I don't know if it technically worked out because it was between him and Adam Thielen and they both had bad weeks. So we're talking one or two points there. But are you again benching Cooper Cup this week? Um, I would probably lean towards yes, because I don't trust he's going to make it through the game again. Like last week he played and he was in and out. Um, He re-aggravated the ankle injury. Like it was rough even before he was hurt. He started off on fire. We thought we had Cooper Cup back. And then he had like four and five half PPR points and then the injury. Like it's really been unfortunate that we haven't had old Cooper Cup, but I'm more confident playing Puka Nakua than I am Cooper Cup right now. And I never thought I would say that unless Cup was not in the lineup at all. So I'm leaning towards hopefully finding another option. Um if you have major bye week problems, roll out Cooper Cup and hope, but the matchup's not good either. So, obviously, he missed some time. He missed the first four weeks, and he, uh, I actually think week 10 was their bye, so they, he didn't miss week 10. How many points do you think Cooper Cup has scored in total since week, or starting at week seven to now? That includes either a buy or not playing a week 10. 7, 8, 9, 11, 12. Okay, so that's five weeks. Um, I want to say it's about 35. If my math is correct, he has scored 13.7 points. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a half point. Pe- I had a standard scoring. So that bumps it up a little bit uh but we're still oh, so probably you're docking under... out the first two weeks where he did well 13 points in five games 
sent, going back to week seven, so week seven, eight, nine, 11, and 12, he had just under 20 points combined for Cooper Cup. That's absolutely crazy. And only two of those now were dealing with injury. One where he got one target and then got hurt. And then last week where he got a, like what two catches, but he was in and out. So it's not even because of the injury. There's three weeks in there where he probably had three weeks scoring a total of 14. That's still horrible. Yeah. 20.7 is the official number. Uh, that does include the Dallas game where he had 10 targets, but only four catches and the Rams struggled. Um, but obviously there is something to do, you know, Brett Rippon played in week nine, against the Packers where he had seven targets, but only two catches. So there has been some inconsistency, but that goes to show like, this is not, this is very similar. This is similar in the sense that like, this is the Cooper cup that you remember drafting, even though we still drafted him so high because he's been banged up. Uh, and I don't think you play him. I'm right there with you on wanting to play Puka Nakua over, over him. And especially with Kyron Williams back, he was getting involved in the passing game and the running game. Uh, it's crazy that cup might be, the third option at this point uh just based on injuries and all that good stuff that's not good stuff but you know what i'm saying no 100 percent. and i mean honestly play tyler higby over him too but i'm just kidding but higby has been decent too in the bucket so all right we want to get to the game of the week now sure take it off all right san francisco 49ers traveling back to philadelphia to face the eagles Last time they were here, NFC Championship game did not go well for San Francisco. And there's been a lot of talk back and forth in this one. So I'm excited to see how this goes. But uh, San Francisco, pretty much healthy. Um, I think the only skill position player they had on their injury report was Ray May- Ray, Ray McLeod. Uh, so they're all good there. Eagles still dealing with some stuff. Uh, AJ Brown, Julio Jones, both limited participant on Thursday. They should be good to go, but dealing with a little bit of injury. Devontae Smith, DeAndre Swift. Uh, limited to full in their practice reports this week. And the Eagles obviously still missing Dallas Goddard has not practiced yet. His target to come back is next week versus Dallas. So do not expect him to go. Um, but he is not on injured reserve. So there's still an outside chance. He does. Um, you're playing all your Eagles. You're playing all your 49ers. We're expecting this to be a shootout of a game. So I don't think we're really super worried about, you know, the fantasy end of this, uh, we're not going to get cute and bench somebody because the 49ers defense is good or the Eagles defense isn't bad. Like, I don't think that's our question here. I think this is just a who's actually going to win this game. Talk some actual football with this one. The 49ers are going to win this game. I don't. 49ers are going to dominate this game. I, I'm now sorry. that. Uh, that's I, aggressive. I, I, it might be. It might be aggressive. But the 49ers are going to dominate this game. Now, maybe dominates too strong. Maybe it comes down to fourth quarter. What's this? What's the spread on this game? Eagles underdogs by three, which I think yeah. is fair too. Like I honestly do think the 49ers should be fair in this game. The 49 this game means more to them than it does to Philly. That's exactly why I said it's, they're going to because we heard about them saying that they were the better team last year and then they lost Brock Purdy in the championship game. Mm-hmm. So I think they're going to come out and this is, I'm about to sneeze. Try not to do it. Oh, made it through. I don't know how I was <laughs> running that one. It, that was probably the worst looking video. If you're checking us out on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button, but I'll go ahead and cut that. Like Cody likes to cut quotes about me and being a Chargers. Hey, I've never shared that with the public, just our group chats. <laughs> uh but anyways the cool. eagles they've they, they're in a brutal stretch of their schedule right now uh they had the chiefs then they had the bills now they have the 49ers then they have dallas like this is a brutal stretch for them they're going through it right now and honestly i know they're sitting at 10 and 1 but you could argue you know they came down to the wire the first game against dallas and they were a dropped deep ball to mvs away from losing uh, against the Chiefs. They were, you know, a miracle 59-yard field goal in sloppy con- conditions and the Bills not going for it to try to soar there at the end of the game. Like, So they've been in very close games. I'm not saying they don't deserve to win because good teams find a way to win in rough situations. 
But I think this game is going to mean so much for the Rhinos. They're going to come out. They're probably going to bring that boom box out that they like to or they used to last year. They're going to be hyped. Uh, and I don't know if because of the gauntlet that they've come through, if the Eagles can match the intensity. Trust me, I know this game's in Philadelphia. I know the Philadelphia fans will match the intensity. With the gauntlet, that, will the players do it? Will the players be like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll see you in the playoffs? And the good news is, is the Eagles do have a two-game lead on the 49ers. So even if they do lose this game, they still control their own destiny to the number one seed and making this be a rematch in the NFC Championship game or sooner or later, depending on how the final seeding pops out. So maybe I'm a little too much bought into the, the 49ers thing, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head. This game means more to the 49ers than the Eagles. And I think, I'm not saying the Eagles take the week off. I, I said dominate, but it will probably be competitive. And I also like this game more too for the 49ers if it isn't a shootout. If this game is you know, a little bit of a slugfest, like hit you in the mouth, you know, 24 17 something like that something we're expecting both teams to be in the 20s but both these defenses are good and i think the 49ers defense is better and uh jalen hurts has been i know for, he's still i think the front runner for mvp but he has mm -hmm. not been super consistent uh the last couple of weeks in my eyes it's been bad 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 make a big play late and maybe bad's not the right disappointing is probably a better word than bad yeah but you know what i'm trying yeah. to say mm -hmm. i think the biggest change when it comes to how the eagles played early in the year to how they play or playing now is hertz is still playing inconsistent but it's not inconsistency that's leading to turnovers he did have a really poor pull on a read option to gain well in the second quarter last week that led to a really bad fumble but like his turnover numbers in the first, I want to say it was six weeks compared to the last six weeks has been better, um, which is why they've been able to hang in with good teams as opposed to like when they are in their easier part of the schedule, they were still able to win those games, you know, even fairly handedly, despite losing in the turnover battle three to one or whatever it might have been. Um this I don't see this being a blowout. If it is, I'll be shocked. I do see San Francisco winning. Uh, because this does mean more to them. And the Eagles are in a really interesting schedule quirk where this is now their third straight week where they're facing a team coming off of a buy or a mini buy. Uh, San Francisco had four extra days on the Eagles and rest here. They went through an overtime game in the rain. They played in the rain in Kansas City before that. And the 49ers and Thanksgiving. Let's check. Let's go to the weather report. Sunday at 3 p.m. 48% chance of rain at. 6 p.m., 56% chance of rain, 60% chance of rain all throughout the day on Sunday. So it looks like the rain will continue to fall in uh, Philadelphia this week and be the third straight <laughs> rain game for the Eagles. Man, can't beat that weather. I think I'm good with this one. Anything else you want to add? Nah. You want to talk about the Rio game of the week? Are you talking about Kansas City and Green Bay? I'm talking about <laughs> Taylor Swift versus Simone Biles. Oh, that's the matchup. There we go. Yeah, if you're like, why have you mentioned Simone <laughs> Biles? Well, the Packers safety Jonathan Owens is actually Simone Biles' wife. Husband, she is his wife. And so maybe they'll be that's in the same box. Time. Maybe We'll uh, get to see them. I don't even know if Tesla's going to be there. I don't know if Simone Biles is going to be there. <laughs> Let's talk about the actual game. Chiefs Packers. Swift is going to be there. Packers. She's living with Travis Kelsey right now. So, Yeah, but the game's still not in Kansas City. That would mean she's required to get there herself, and it's not in a flashy city like New York. So, <laughs> Not the point. I'm not... Green Bay is lovely. Hey, look, Green Bay is a vacation destination. It is. There is no place like Green Bay in this country. And I'll stand by that. The fact that there is houses that have their backyard and just Lambeau Field there. It's it's wild. But Cody's Dream let's House. Let's talk football. <laughs> yes. Cody's <laughs> Dream House for sure. Uh Packers coming off the big win against the Vikings on not the Vikings, the Lions. I wish it was the Vikings too, but it was the Lions on Thanksgiving. Chiefs had the comeback victory against the Raiders. Uh, Packers are six point underdogs despite 
uh, their big win, mostly because I mentioned I believe the Chiefs only allowed more than 21 points on the season one time because their defense is playing lights out and the Packers are dealing with injuries. A.J. Dillon was a limited participant uh, after being DNP on Wednesday, goes to limited on Thursday with a groin. We're expecting him to go. They're probably just being a little bit cautious because Aaron Jones is DNP, not expected to be back from that MCL strain this week. Uh, Jaden Reed has been DNP the last two weeks with a chest injury. Uh, some rumors are that he has been held out as a precaution. We'll probably get a limited on Friday and be good to go, but I don't know if you're going to play him this week anyways, but he is one of those receivers that has been on the up and up with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Chiefs have Jarek McKinnon as a limited participant. So uh, the Packers, they have been playing better as of late, but they have really been becoming the team that spreads the ball around, and there hasn't been a guy. I mentioned Jaden Reed two weeks ago. It was his game. Last game, we could argue, was Christian Watson's game. The week before that, or two, three weeks ago in Pittsburgh, it was the Romeo Dobbs game, or that was also Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs. You know, there's not a true guy that you're willing to start. So I'm asking time you, out, Time out, though. You're like, oh, so three weeks ago was Romeo Dobbs, but it was also Jaden Reed. And then two weeks ago, it was Jaden Reed. And then last week, it was Christian Watson and Jaden Reed. I'm just saying, it's Jaden Reed right now. He's had more than 10 at least three straight weeks. You didn't see it last week because Christian Watson went off, but Jaden Reed had a solid game. Yeah, maybe I'm just reading too much into the injury or too much into the slot corner, Trent McDuffie, that is really uh, balling out this year to end this defense and all that good stuff. Um, but you're right. He did have, you know, he only had 34 yards last week, but he had the touchdown. So he saved it with a touchdown to get above that. Uh, so Jaden Reed is probably the guy if you want to play somebody you're going to play him this week despite the the chest injury but I was just going to I was going to the point that there's really not a Green Bay Packer that I want to play this week and that includes Jordan Love who I got a stat for you in Packers franchise history has become the first quarterback to have 3 three touchdown games with no interceptions in its first 12 starts, hmm. which there's a lot of, you know, in his first 12 starts, like a lot of fat talk in that. I get that, but it is pretty impressive in when you get to say Jordan love is the only quarterback in Packers franchise history. Another fun stat for you uh, through 11 games uh, as his first year as a starter and Aaron Rodgers' first year as a starter, they both have 21 total touchdowns. They both have the same amount of interceptions, and their passing yards are identical to wow. the single yard. It is crazy. <laughs> the 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 whole, like, these two. And just so you know, Jordan Love's numbers are almost identical to Jalen Hurts, too. But one's an MVP candidate, and the other guy is... Not sure if he's the guy. Just wanted to throw that out there too. Maybe I'm a little bit tired of people talking shit on Packer or Jordan Love, and I apologize for swearing. <laughs> it's all good. I don't think we had to hit the explicit tag for that one, but no, I'm with you. Jordan Love, it's his first year starting, and this is literally the youngest roster in the entire NFL. I think Love is the future, and I think the Packers are going to be just fine. The fact that they're producing as well as they are with a roster this young and a quarterback in his first year starting. Uh, gives me a lot of faith that they're going to turn the corner pretty quick. But people, this is a what have you done for me lately kind of league. Um, so if they go out and lose to the Chiefs, going to be like, ah, oh, they're not there yet. Even after last week, they were like, oh my gosh, they beat the Lions. This team's coming around. And then before that, they were like, these guys can't win. They're they're done. Like it's it's so roller coaster because of what have you done for me lately. If you're looking at the long term, like you should be, Packers fans, you're looking good. Yeah, and. I know they play the Chiefs, and they just came out that big win. And if I'm being 100% honest, like, to get two wins like this in a row against the Lions and the Chiefs, and if you want to throw the Chargers in there to the week before that, like, to get three big wins would be super impressive. But the NFC is not that tough right now. Like, the Seahawks and the Vikings are the sixth and seventh seed currently. The Packers are the eighth seed. So the wild card is still open. They're only a half a game back behind the Vikings at the moment. And after the Chiefs, the Packers have – I don't remember the exact order, but I can tell you the five teams. It is the Buccaneers, the Panthers, the Vikings, the Bears, 
and the Giants. In some order. I don't have the order memorized. That could that easily be five. five. You, you should at least go so three and Jayden two there. That. And if they go three and two there, I with the Chiefs three and three, like that's a chance at a playoff spot. And I think you're going to say about Jaden Reed could be a good play down the stretch. I agree. Yeah. So maybe he's not a guy this week. Maybe he is because he has been getting the most usage. But uh, Jaden Reed could be like we talked about at the top, the playoff, the fantasy championship winner because of the plus matchups. All right, we're getting a little long here, and we have a couple more things to do. We have Monday Night Football, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Jacksonville Jaguars, a uh, game that looked like it would have been amazing. And then unfortunate Joe Burrow injury led us to this game that's a little bit underwhelming. Um, and Cincinnati underdogs by nine. I mean, I get why. It just feels wrong seeing Bengals with how they've been underdogs by nine. Does Doug Peterson fly back with the team? What did I miss? Uh, Urban Meyer, that Thursday night game, didn't fly back with the Jaguars to stay at his steakhouse with his family two years ago. Doug Peterson flies back with the team and gets everyone ice cream. That's the difference. Okay. <laughs> wow, they even get ice cream. Uh, Do you yeah, not know I the ice cream get... story? No. He would end his Thursday practices. They have like a, a meeting, talk whatever game plan, and he would end the practice with let's get ice cream every single week back when he was with the Eagles. They had ice cream after practice every single week. Mm, interesting. He's such a dad. Sounds like it. Uh, but we don't have to spend too much time on this game. Uh, Bengals, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, just because of potential. I know Higgins is limited. Unless you want to convince me to play him, I don't think I'm playing Higgins. You've been rolling without him. I'd keep him on the bench. Uh, and then the Jags, it's the guys you've been playing. Christian Kirk, Travis uh, Etienne, Calvin Ridley. Those are the guys. Evan Ingram, at least in the bucket. Sure. Yeah, let's start in the that's bucket. That's about it. Yep. Cool. All right, Cody. That wraps up our talk of every single game. Why don't we jump into our next segment, some survivor picks. I'm interested to see what you're going to say because you don't have anything on the rundown yet. Do you want me to go first or do you want to reveal? No, I, I can go ahead and that's the Jaguars. We just <laughs> talked about this game, the Jaguars. So <laughs> I'll be the perfect transition. It's it's them. Okay. I mean, I might be going bold here because I'm going to chase a team that uh, is – facing a team with a new coach we talked about the new coach bump but i don't have any faith in the panthers um so i'm gonna go buccaneers well yeah i don't hate it i mean there's no. not many other good options out there i've had to you know could you take the chargers over the patriots probably uh in that matchup i'm not touching anybody i mean the lions you would think would be the favorites but in new orleans maybe not Jets, Falcons ain't touching that game. Cardinals, Steelers ain't touching that game. Colts, Titans ain't touching that game. Dolphins, Commanders ain't touching that game. So, Chargers, e Patriots, Eagles, take the Chargers. I guess like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't so, feel great about it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if you're not going to feel great about it, I think the Bucks are a worse team than the Chargers, even though the Chargers have been struggling. Like I would rather take the worst team and be like, ah, they're facing the worst team in the league. Go with that. All right. So Survivor picks not a great segment. Let's get into no. an even better. Segment. That's right. We're spending Tyler's money. And this week, we're going to hit a little bit interesting with our parlay. We're going to be picking over under on receptions this week. So I'll go ahead and lead us off. I actually went into the Monday night game to try to see if I could find a steal for like a Jamar chase with a backup quarterback. See if I could maybe find him at like three and a half receptions and try to find something else. But I then found that they didn't have Bengals odds up yet, but they had Jaguars odds up. And with how hot Calvin Ridley's been, his over under is still only at four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and take Calvin Ridley over four and a half catches. All righty. So you did that one. Um, like you said, because we record this on Wednesday, it is a little bit hard. Just so everyone knows that's a plus plus one thirty. So great start for this parlay already. Um, so that means it's my turn, and I'm going to go opposite of what George said for his pick, and I'm going to go a little bit wild and bold and 
and crazy here, but I'm going to buy into this offense that's going to uh, pop up with the new offensive coordinator. Well, back to the offensive coordinator. New head coach, the Carolina Panthers. Uh, because the game's so awful, I'm going to get some juice in this game. And the, the, you know, the, the guy that most people would probably take is Adam Thielen. And I am not going to do that. Because uh, he said at five and a half receptions, I ain't going anywhere near that. So I'm going to take a guy that only needs three catches. Uh, he's a rookie second round pick. He's been coming on a little bit more and more this week. See if he gets more involved. They call up some plays for him. So I'm going to add to our parlay, Jonathan Mingo over two and a half. Not one of the rookie wide receivers that people have been talking about either. So I'd like going out there trying to bring some juice in with some new guys. Um, and like, yeah, like you said, Mingo has been coming on a little bit these last few weeks. I like that pick with a new head coach and play caller coming in there, trying to bring a little bit, something different to that offense. All righty. And Tyler was not able to get us his pick this week. So that means George and I have to fight over for the third pick. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, you'll see the good old wheel of names, uh, up there. Uh, the two teams we are debating at, we're, we decided to go in the, Sunday night game, not the Sunday night game, the Sunday game of the week, four o'clock window. I have Brandon Ayuk over four and a half and George has Devonta Smith over four and a half. So it's no matter what, it's going to come down to the Eagles 49ers. But George, I'm going to spin the wheel. The wheel is spinning. We're building the suspense. Unless something crazy happens, it's going to be Brandon Ayuk. You hear the crowd go wild. Four and a half. So that will be our third and final pick uh, over under receptions for Brandon Ayuk at four and a half. Put that into our good friends at DraftKings. Hashtag not a sponsor, but would love if they were. This one's bold. This one's bold. I think our biggest win opportunity on the season. Uh, $5, which is what Tyler let us spend each week, plus 743 to win 42 bucks. So, not too shabby. Not too shabby there. And we're only asking coach. for 13 catches total. That's all. Yeah, I feel like we should have probably hit some unders. I feel like we're – offense <laughs> has not been as explosive, so not, not second-guessing myself in, in this one. But anything else you want to add on to about the parlay? No, I'm just hoping we get Tyler's money back here a little bit. But – uh Looking forward to another good week. Good luck to you guys out there who are in a playoff chase. Remember to send us your start sick questions as well. We got you covered. For sure. Uh, definitely send us our start sick questions. As always, thanks for listening to Couch GM's podcast. Make sure you follow us at the Couch GM's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you call it these days. George is putting out short starts of the week. Waiver wires. Make sure you're following along with those. He's holding up a mini helmet. Eyes emoji. Tyler Snyder should be back finally with joining us next week. Looking forward to that one. I'm Cody Roadcap. That's George Kurt. We will talk to you all 